Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's definitely been a hot minute. Uh, I apologize for the delay in some of my content, but today I'm going to give you guys not one, not two, but three, a three part tutorial. And these three videos, they're, I'm going to cover most of it in the first video. And then the other two is just kind of going bead for bead with the, the hoop earrings that I'm making. So grab your supplies because there's not going to be no sped up parts in any of this or in any of these videos. And uh, yeah, we're going to go over some of the color combos that I do for one of my most sought after designs. And to be specific, this is a Peyote Stitch tutorial on the hoop earrings that I make. So uh, let's get started. All right, we're going to jump right into how it is that I come up with my designs and my color combinations. And we're also gonna go through the supply list that you're going to need for this video tutorial. I'm going to try and be as thorough as possible. So if there are any extra questions, please feel free to ask, I will respond in somewhat of a timely manner. So when it comes to color combinations and picking designs, I do try to pick a blend. Mostly I try to pick a blend. Another important factor with picking out my colors is contrast. So you need to have a color blend and a color contrast. If you do not choose to do a color blend and you only want to choose something like maybe three, two, two to four different colors, then I highly suggest you pick colors that contrast each other because you want your designs and your beadwork to pop out. You want your work to pop out, whether they're subtle or not. Because if you choose milky colors like pastels, just straight pastels, you're not going to get that contrast that you're looking for. So a prime example of color blending here is the neon colors that I chose for here. And then the, my contrast color is a very dark tealy forest green. And that's what I decided to go with on these earrings. This pair that I made for myself I decided to go with three colors with a background color as well and I decided to make it so that they would contrast each other. And then for this one I kind of was thinking of like winter kind of cold you know ice frozen not the movie and I really needed that contrast color in there with a dark blue. All right, so now that we've got the basis of my designs down packed, like how I come up with color combos, let's get right into the materials that you're going to need for this tutorial. So we are going to make the matching pair to this one. And I chose a small hoop because I, I didn't want the video to be so long. And I want to take you guys from beginning to end. And these hoops, you can find them at Walmart. This is where I got them from. You're going to need something with somewhat of a thickness to them. Something that feels solid and not so flimsy. I don't know if you're going to be able to find decently priced um, sterling silver hoop earrings, but if that's what you need, because if you have an allergic reaction to fake earrings, um, then you go with the, the sterling silver. I highly suggest just using them for your own personal use and not trying to sell them because if you buy gold, like actual gold earrings, 
or sterling silver earrings, you're going to have to price them up decently high and not a lot of people are willing to pay the dollar for these hoop earrings. So these hoops that I get, they are hypoallergenic and I use them on myself for somebody who has allergies to pretty much everything and I haven't had any type of issues with using them. The only thing is, is over time they do tarnish but if you don't want your hoops to tarnish, I highly suggest using some type of clear nail polish. And if you're gonna beat around the hoop like this, I would only put the nail polish on where you, it's going to tarnish, which is usually this piece right here. And you need to make sure that when you put the nail polish on that it's not gonna hinder the use of this spring action right here because uh, I've done it <laughs> okay anyways so now you know where I got my hoops from they're from Walmart another place that I like to get them from is Claire's so I only suggest going to Claire's if you are in somewhat of a demand and you're selling these like hotcakes okay so I put in about hundred dollars on hoop earrings from Claire's totally worth it for me because I go through them no problem and the ones at Walmart they come in multi packs of like different sizes and you you get a you get a decent amount for what you pay and they're pretty much the same the whatever they're selling at Walmart is pretty much the same at Claire's but I couldn't find all of the sizes that I wanted at Walmart, so I went to Claire's. Claire's has bigger hoops with the same thickness. So like I said, you're gonna need something that's pretty thick, that's gonna fit seven beads around. That's my main focus with finding hoop earrings because if you end up getting something thinner, you're gonna have to work with smaller beads, which is kind of a pain in the butt, but they look nice. So like I said, maybe 10 minutes ago, we are gonna get into the supplies. So you're gonna want a good pair of scissors. These, I can't remember where I got them from. I think I got them from Walmart. I don't know. But here we have Walmart, Michaels, or Fabricland. Those are probably the three places that I would pick up my scissors from. And these are small, they're gonna do the trick for you. Next thing you're gonna want is wax, depending on the type of thread that you're working with. If you're working with quilting thread, like I do, wax will come in handy with keeping your thread from knotting easily and knotting, tangling, and it also makes your thread a little bit more durable, stronger, helps the beads kind of stay a little bit more in place when there's a nice layer of wax around the thread. Now you're also gonna need some needles. So the needles that I like to use, because I'm working with size 11 Delica beads, I try to use anywhere from size 10, 11, or 12 beading needles. So these are the beading needles that I've been using lately and they've been working pretty well for me. But like I said, you can use size 10, 11, or 12 with the size 11 Delica beads. Now we'll get into the beads that I'm using. So I've chosen to use four colors and have one background color. So with the designs and everything, you're gonna have background colors. Purple is the background color on this. Teal is the background color on this. White is the background color on this. Well, technically it's a white AB. Technically this is a teal luster AB. And this is a light purple <laughs> opaque color. <laughs> I forgot what color was there for a second. If you really wanna get technical with the colors. So like I said, you'll wanna pick four 
different colors, whether you're going to choose the color blending or the contrasting or the color blending and the contrasting, and then you wanna have your main background color that is not the same as these colors. That is the key to the designs that I come up with. So let's get these be this needle threaded and I will be right back. The hoop. So I'm gonna show you guys with bigger beads because I find it will be a little bit more easier to see visually. <laughs> so you're gonna string up seven beads. I also was like trying to figure out how I was going to show this with the black beads and my dark nails. <laughs> it was not going to be possible on those small hoops. So you're going to get your seven beads strung up. And for all my designs, this bead is going to go in the back beside this bead in the back on the inside of the hoop. So there's an inside and there's an outside when you're beading and your beads are gonna lay that way. So you need to remember that depending on what type of design you're doing. So we're gonna go ahead and go through that last bead so that we make a circle. Like so. Now you're going to skip this bead, but you're going to string up your other bead. You're going to skip the next bead beside where you came out of, and you're going to go through this bead. And you're going to do the same thing. Skip this bead and go through the next bead. You don't have to worry about tightening anything just yet. Skip this bead, and go through this bead. Now you're almost back full circle. You're going to go ahead and skip that bead and go through this one. And you're going to see it a little bit closely as I start tightening everything. So you can see the seven beads that you started with and then you can see the beads that we added. Now I know it looks a little wonky but if you follow it step by step you'll start to see it round off. And this is how I start my hoops. I don't, I start off with these seven, eleven beads off of the hoop first so that I can tighten everything up and then I start then I put it onto the hoop when I'm done tightening everything up. So now I'm going to go double double back before I add any more beads to this. So I double back I'm going to go through all of the red beads just the red beads until I come up to these two beads, green beads that are together. Green, neon yellow. That would be the proper way to say it. <laughs> so go through all of the red again. And you can tighten as you're going along.
Don't worry about any of the knots sticking out. We'll worry about tucking those in later on down the road. I usually just try and move it out of the way. And then I stick my needle through. So we've come back to the two beads. And you're going to go through that one red bead. Pull it tight. And then we're going to go through where we left off after we added the yellow, the neon yellow beads. And you're going to go through that one, that last bead that you left off at. Then when you're done that, you just kind of tighten things up. Then you're going to stick it on to your hoop and you're just going to continue beading your design. So that's where we're at with this one. I've done my 11 beads, I've doubled back around the top and now I'm ready to continue on with my design. Okay, now that I've shown you guys on the big beads how to start the hoops, let's go ahead and dive right into what it is we are going to do. So with this hoop, we are going to do two rows of white before we start our design. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, we've got our two rows of the background. Now go ahead and just add another white bead to make it three rows in this column. This is going to be our top around the outside of the hoop. So you're going to go ahead and start with the blue. So remember you're only adding that one blue and then you're going to go ahead into the background color. Get 
This is gonna slide up and down this hoop because we don't have anything in between the hoop and the beadwork. So it's gonna constantly slide up and down until you get further down your hoop earring. Now we're back to that column where the blue is. So for anyone to really understand how it is that I do this, the, the beads that are going from the top of the hoop down, the, that's what I call columns. And then the beads that when it wraps around the hoop, those are rows, stacks, rows, so now we're back to the column where the blue is and we're just going to add another blue. Like so. So with this design, in these columns, we're only doing three beads down at a time. This will just focus for me. Let's take that out. There we go. So there are just three beads at a time in the columns before they start branching out into other columns for the design. And this is how I started my this design with just three of them in each column like this. It wasn't until after a while that I 
started doing four beads at a time sometimes even five it depends on what you're working on the size of hoop that you're doing whether it's a hoop or a lanyard with the lanyards I find it kind of drags out the colors a little bit more and helps the designs pop it just I think this kind of gives it like a flare almost like you know like a flame design type of deal anyways so this is why I'm showing you guys where I started with this design so once you can get this design down packed with three beads and a small hoop you can you'll pretty much be able to do it on any size hoop any size rope
Welcome to the end of part one. Now let's go on over to the second part of this tutorial.